hello guys welcome to my channel in today's video we are going to continue with our catfish feed formulation video series in today's video we are going to learn so many important aspects when it comes to formulating fish feed among, among the things we are going to learn in today's video we are going to learn how to calculate carrying capacity of your fish pond before even stocking your fish different types of fish feed the sinking and the floating feed the right way to feed your fish how many times you need to feed your fish to attain maximum growth and many other things this has been some of the areas where most fish farmers have problem especially in the area of calculating the carrying capacity the right fish fish feed size to use and then how to know how when to change the fish size or the fish type in today's video we are going to learn all these things practically and then you'll see in this video today <coughs> but that most fish farmers make a lot of mistakes when it comes to feeding their fish with the right size of fish feed but before we dive into this video consider subscribing to this channel if you are new to this channel and then if you are returning or already subscribed to this channel do not forget to like this video and then in the course of explanation if there is anything you do not understand don't forget to ask a question and then if you want to ask this question use the comment section and ask this particular question and i will attend to you as soon as possible so now it is the right time for us to dive into the video properly okay guys when you look at this table today the reason why i bring this table is for us to access our quality feed after production or for us to access the growth of our fish whether they are doing well or they are not doing well reason being that if you stock your fish you are expected to have this particular result based on the time and then the weight for example as you can see in this table from day one to day 30 you are expected to have 100 to 150 grams that is 0 0.1 to 0 0.15 kg day 31 to day 30 to day 60 you are expected to have 150 to 250 grams that is 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 kg so i think it is not necessary for me to read this particular table for you you can always check the link in the description of this video we have an awesome uh, resource materials for you to download and then it will very it will be very good and then it will be very uh, important for every fish farmer to consider using this particular uh, resource materials so always use the link in the description of this video and get a copy for yourself okay there are factors that we are going to consider if after formulating your own feed if after formulating your own feed and then still you are not getting the expected result that you're supposed to have definitely it may not only be as a result of the quality of the feed being produced maybe it may be as a result of some other factors and these are some of the factors that do affect the growth of your fish even if you have quality feed among those factors we have overstocking your pond to the point of carrying capacity feeding the wrong size of feed to your fish feeding your fish far less than their daily requirement infections and disorders that make it difficult to grow your stocks feeding is inconsistent and erratic that is you do skip feeding your fish so in today's video we are going to look at this particular factors one after another and then how we can be able to overcome them that is why it is very very important for you to stick to me to, to the end of this video as i walk you through step by step on how to overcome these particular challenges if even if you don't have an experience on this today you are going to get a lot of value first of all we must have to understand how to calculate the carrying capacity calculating the carrying capacity is the number one step for you to do before even stocking your own fish because if you overstocked your own fish definitely you expect to see wrong expectation 
what do i mean by wrong expectation you will not have that particular growth that you intended to have at the end of the production cycle or during the harvest period so it is very important for you to calculate the carrying capacity and then what it entails to calculate the carrying capacity is one you must have to have this particular information on ground before you go and start calculating your carrying capacity these are important parameters in the calculation of carrying capacity first of all you must have to know the volume of the water in your pond that is the number one if you don't know how to calculate the volume of the water in your pond ask me in the comment of this video and i will show you how to do that it is very simple i don't want this video to to be longer that is why i don't want to put in so many calculations into it secondly you must predetermine target size at harvest that is you want to target one kg fish at the end of four to five months expected mortality rate usually we do take five to ten percent and then we have constant of static pond system this is a constant of 1.8 kg of fish per square meter so if you all have these things on ground now you can calculate the carrying capacity of your pond or your tank or any other thing you are using to stock your fish okay for example we are going to do a practical calculation here you have a static pond water volume that is 2000 meter square and you intend to produce average size of 1000 grams that is 1 kg of catfish at the end of the stocking period with an average mortality rate of 5% so now how do you determine the actual number of fish you are supposed to put in this particular pond or in this particular tank or any other type of uh, tool you are using in stocking your own fish now the carrying capacity will be the 2000 meter square time is our constant that we have that is the 1.8 square meter per fish isn't it now divided by 1000 that 1000 is the 1 kg gram we are talking about so that 1000 is in grams okay plus the five percent mortality rate now when you multiply 2000 meter square times 1.8 now you have 3600 divided by one that one is the 1000 gram that we converted to kilogram so now if you convert 1000 gram to kilogram you have one kg that is the one we are using there plus the five percent mortality rate so now you have 3600 plus five percent of three thousand six hundred so now three thousand six hundred plus now five percent of three thousand six hundred is one hundred and eighty so now three thousand six hundred plus one hundred and eighty it will going to give you three thousand seven hundred and eighty juvenile so three thousand seven hundred and eighty juvenile is expected to be stocked in two thousand meter square container so that is how you calculate the carrying capacity of your own container or any other thing you are using to stock your own fish so anything above this 3780 then you are overstocking the pond then definitely you experience a lot of problem so if you do not understand maybe during the explanation of this uh, ask me in the comment of this video so we have different sizes of fish feed and then we have different stages of fish and then we have two types of fish feed the first one we have the extruded feed that is the floating and then the second one we have the non extruded feed that is the sinking feed and then how do we administer this particular type of feed to which stage of fish are we expected to give this particular types of fish that is what we are going to look at in this particular video and you can believe with me that this is also part of the formulation strategy so that is why if you are coming new into this channel do not forget to subscribe to this channel hit the bell notification icon like this video and also share it with your friends that may find it very valuable okay now the floating fish feed is given to fish at early stage it is the best fit for fishes at seven to eight weeks of age and then the sinking fit this type of fit is more employed after eight weeks of feeding your fish with floating feet okay this is how you do it 
floating feet. If you have your fingerlings that are 3 to 4 grams, you give them 1.5 mm feet size of floating feet. Post fingerlings 4 to 6 grams, 1.8 mm feet size. Juvenile 6 to 10 grams, 2 mm feet size. And then as you can see on the screen of this video to the end. So this is for floating feet up to where you have 150 to 200 grams you administer 4 mm feet okay so now look at it this way when you feed your feet fish with floating feet up to this level you are expected to change the feet to a sinking feet so now sinking feet 200 to 300 grams you administer 2 mm of the sinking feet 300 to 600 grams 4 mm well, yes if you have them in your own area like 8 mm and 10 mm you can give them and if they are unavailable it is recommended you continue with the 6 mm feet size of sinking feet there is no problem this is recommended for you how many times do you need to feed your fish yes of course when you're dealing with fingerlings 3 to 4 grams you feed twice daily post fingerlings 4 to 6 grams twice daily because they need more feed at this particular stage juvenile 6 to 10 grams twice daily post juvenile 10 grams and above you can give them once daily some people usually administer twice daily it is not bad so this is very important for you to understand this so i don't want this video to be very longer that is why i deem it fit to stop this particular part three video of our video series on catfish fish formulation but in our next video thoroughly we are going to look at how to calculate the quantity of feed that you are expected to each and every day so that you do not overfeed or underfeed your fishes so it is very important that you watch out to the next video as you can learn how to calculate the exact quantity of fish feed administer to your own fish for example if you stock 1000 fish now how many or what quantity are you expected to give 1000 fish is expected to measurable uh, 